five minutes. If you want to just sit still for a few minutes while he reloads his camera. The next speaker that we have up will be our president, and he's going to introduce um, our Congress, our senators, our House of Representatives, his administration. Some of our people aren't here yet. And then when he's done, we're going to have a lunch break. We'll have some music. We've got some musicians lined up. After lunch, uh, Phil Pippen, who's a talk show host, will be here. And Jack Blood, who's a talk show host out of Georgia, who used to be in Austin. And he is very much on our page. He's very much in favor of what we're doing. And he's been supporting us for the last four or five months on the radio program out of Georgia. So uh, we hopefully will um, entertain you this afternoon. These two guys that are going to speak are pretty dynamic. And we're really thankful that, the, that he made the trip from Georgia to be with us. So you ready there, Mr. Ron? OK, we're going to wait while you take it to the table. Please do not fall. <laughs> and in the back there, I don't know if any of you noticed, if you live here in the, um, in the city or the county, there's a dog rescue table back there also. And in the back, where Ed and those guys are, they're selling uh, Republic of Texas coins and shirts and lanyards and koozies if you're interested in getting any of that. Are you ready, Ron? No? Okay. So we're just glad that y'all showed up and we look for um, a lot of people showing up here in a little while. So we'll wait for Ron. I think what we're going to do is have our president give his speech and then when he's done, he's going to introduce all the members that we have here who hold positions in the Republic of Texas. So we're just going to let him get ready, Ron. I'm ready. doing is live streaming this out to people who couldn't be here. So hold on. Uh, I'm going to introduce our president, John Jarnicky. Thank you. Hopefully I've got the glasses I can look over and still look and read and see what I've written. Uh, Everybody else seems to be able to uh, do off the cuff. I've got to write my stuff down. The older I get, the worse my memory gets. Anyway, uh, I want to issue a welcome to all you freedom-loving folks that came here today to see and to hope that the Republic of Texas is a solution to the ever-increasing loss of your rights and freedoms in Texas, the United States, and the world. I was hoping uh, we would have a bigger crowd here by now because I wanted to also welcome the people from the state of Texas and the U.S. government who are probably going to be sent here to find out how much of a threat to their scam that we are. I personally have been involved with the Republic of Texas for about 17 years. First as an observer, soaking up as much information as I could, then as a voting citizen through a provisional government, and as a senator when the Constitutional Republic of Texas was brought out of abeyance in 2005. We've made a lot of mistakes, 
gone down rabbit trails that put us in the wrong direction, survived several splits from differing agendas, but we survived and were stronger for it. The way things have gone in the present and the past few administrations of the United States government, each escalating the destruction of your rights has brought us to this point, a boiling point, if you will. In that regard, Obama, Bush, Clinton, and their cronies have been one of the best things that has happened to us to wake us up. To the point of saying, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. Some of the things that I and the other speakers will say will probably upset some of you. But please listen to the end to make an informed judgment as to how good your life is and has been and how good you want it to be. Nobody ever said your life was going to be easy, God or anyone else. But it would be worth it if we stay the course and do the right thing. One of the primary causes of the mess that the United States, Texas, and the world is in is apathy. We've been programmed to accept as fact that the elite politicians and bureaucrats that run our lives through government know better than us what's good for us. Herein lies my first admonition for the nation of Texas depoliticized Texas. Political parties, corporate lobbyists, special interest groups with an ulterior power-grabbing agenda should not be allowed. I equate them as treason against the people. It is your responsibility to study to do background research on any candidate for public office and vote accordingly. Do not allow yourself to be intimidated, as was the case in 1844 and 1845, when U.S. troops were on the soil of Texas telling Texas citizens to either vote for annexation or don't vote at all. This has been a proven fact. Uh, it, the biggest uh, part of that happened around Galveston. We have been an occupied nation since that time, and it needs to come to a, a halt. We need to close the existing loopholes within our 1836 Constitution that favored government over individual rights by amendment or write a new one. Government needs to be from the ground up, not from the top down as it is now. Government responsibility should start where the people have the most control. Precinct, town, city, county, district, and finally, national government that has few delegated duties, such as protecting the people, which is national defense, regulate commerce between Texas and other nations, coin money, not paper, fix weights and measures, establish post offices and post roads, grant charters, declare war, enter into treaties with other nations. Texas is a sovereign, neutral nation having friendly relations with all and a tangling alliances with none.
Wilson heard repeating, I believe, from Ronald Reagan, a government big enough to give you everything you want is big enough to take everything you have. When I took office, I made several suggestions to Congress of things that I felt needed to be addressed to protect the people of Texas. One of the first things on, on my list was no executive orders except under attack or national weather emergency. We know what executive orders that they have done to, in the United States. Uh, it's made a mess out of everything and it has created a dictator as president of the United States. We don't want it, we don't need it. No political parties. No legislation shall ever contain more than one subject matter. That was a uh, bill that it ran, went through, it passed and signed into law. No surveillance of, of citizens by government except by court order for specific people. No GMO crops. That's a, that's a pet peeve of mine. They, Monsanto and other companies have come up with the GMOs and nobody has a clue what it, what's in it. Uh, they talk about uh, spider genetics in the tomatoes and all that kind of thing. Uh, if we're going to protect the people that we're here to serve, then I think that that needs to be banned somehow. A five-year citizenship requirement. We don't have a problem with, with people immigrating into Texas, but they need to understand and know everything about Texas. They need to uh, be able to speak the language. Uh, illegal immigration has got to stop. And as a nation, as our own nation, we can do it. The U.S. certainly isn't. The fact is they're inviting them in. No corporate or foreign government lobbyists allowed any elected or appointed official soliciting or accepting a bribe to be charged with treason. You know how these, how these fat cat politicians that, that are in the United States and even in the state of Texas, you know, once they get elected, they, uh, they may be poor folks when they go in, but they're certainly not when they come out. We don't want that, we don't need it, and we can't allow that to uh, uh, be a hindrance against the people. No hazardous chemicals allowed in any public water supply. You know, there's, there's all kinds of things that corporations are, are sticking in the water, sometimes on the QT, sometimes they're sold a bill of goods to the cities and that, and, uh, and they stick them in by telling them that, uh, hey, we'll give you so much money and uh, you get this in there, it's, it's good, but it, it causes too many problems. It's not checked out enough. Lawyers are always going to be around, but I don't believe that lawyers' bar card should ever be honored in the nation of Texas. Judges should have no right to deny admission of evidence by defense or the prosecution or tell the jury what verdict to find. I'm sure that we've all seen that in the news or whatever, that uh, some judge won't allow certain bits of evidence. He, he's basically making the decision. The jury is the one that makes the decision. The judge is nothing but a mediator. At least that's the way it's supposed to be. No funds from the public treasury shall ever be given or loaned to any business entity, domestic or foreign, or a foreign government. 
The United States has been uh, taking your money, everybody else's money, and giving it to any any other country, and supposedly it's a loan which is never paid back. Texas has no business ever doing anything like that. Texas shall never borrow money from the IMF or World Bank. The bankers control everything that goes on. We can't have that in Texas. Texas shall never allow fractional reserve banking. That is certainly a pet peeve of mine. If you've got something that, uh, money that's worth something, then it needs to be worth what it says it is, not two or three percent of what it's supposed to be. The display of Christian symbols shall never be disallowed on public or private property. Yeah, and I'm sure that we can all relate to various cases that have come up. Uh, there was a judge in Alabama that wouldn't have uh, got thrown out because he wouldn't, he was not allowed to display the Ten Commandments in his uh, courtroom. That's not right. We are who we are. You know, the flip side of the coin of freedom is responsibility, which we must all take. The sad state of affairs in the world today did not come about from people taking responsibility. I'll give you a case in point. Establishment leaders today create illusions that we need and benefit from their guidance. In turn, we accept them and want them for our authorities. They oblige and get their intoxicating rights in life ruling over us. Our career politicians and regulatory bureaucrats and many corporate executives are on that ride. They play on our resistance to self-leadership and personal responsibility by dumbing down our educational system and our jobs with specialized thinking and by defeating our entrepreneurial business environment with legislation and regulations. Career politicians and bureaucrats do their best to suppress our thinking process starting with inferior education and ending in punishing legislation and regulation. Even when we know our leaders are dishonest, we seem to fear not having them, so we're led into basic slavery. We in the Republic of Texas, if we're going to keep our freedom, once our independence is regained, must be very careful and cautious about who we let or appoint to a government position at any level. We must promote and encourage medical, technological, agricultural, and entrepreneurial research and development not stifled by a bunch of codes and statutes and laws created by big business lobbyists through payoffs and blackmail arm twisting to elected and appointed government officials, which in my book is treason against the Texian people. They do this because they want a monopoly on, the, on what they're running. They don't want any competition. Competition makes things better. It, it gives better prices uh, to, to the goods that you buy. Uh, competition is, is good. You need it. Texas can and will be the greatest nation that's ever been as long as we never lose sight of the goal and teach our children and grandchildren the same. Fellow Texans, we are a part of this government now 
don't have all the answers to a lot of questions. There are vacancies in the House of Representatives and the Senate as well as judicial and executives that need to be filled by dedicated, honest, and willing to learn people. We need people to step up to the plate and help us get what we can get uh, to get our independence back and make it work. If people are stuck on apathy, then nothing will ever happen. But until we can get off our hineys and get other people to get off their hind ends and get over this apathy and know what they're you know, people deserve the government that they that they get if they don't have guts enough to do something about it. And that's that's kind of the the end of the uh, written speech that I put up. As I say, I'm not much of an off the cuff speaker, so I've got to write a write a bunch of notes and write everything out. But uh, with that being said, I want to want to thank you. And at the end of the day, there's going to be question and answer period. But right now, I want to introduce to you the people that are a part of our government. Uh, Vice President Ed Brown. Uh, well, he's back there by the by the ticket booth. Ed Brown, can you get up here? Anyone that can, uh, that's not tied up, that's part of the uh, administration or rep or senate, I'd, I'd like you all to come up here if you would.
Sally Jarnicky, a representative. Mike Wells, representative. He's back there in the ticket booth. Uh, Carl Kane, another representative. Did I get everybody that was up? In the judicial, we have the Supreme Court Chief Justice Ray Cannon.
what it takes to get it, and most of all, what it takes to keep it. What is required of us, the people of society in Texas, to keep the freedom once we've won it, and we will win it. We're, we're fast approaching that time. But Thomas Jefferson once quotably said, a people who choose to be ignorant and free want something that never was and never will be. <laughs> Now, by ignorant, he meant uninformed. Stupid is cannot be cured, but ignorance can be cured, right? People who want to be uninformed and free want something that never was and never shall be. So this webinar platform called Infinite Conferencing has a capacity of having a thousand computers tuned into it at one time. I think we'll probably start with 100 because you pay according to how many people you want to connect to. But I think it will rapidly grow and be up to 1,000. By the time we reach 1,000, they'll probably be offering 2,000. But this is a big system of not art that we pay for the service. And this thing, you can tell people about it. We'll have business cards printed. You can hand them out to people and they can take it home and get on the webinar. This thing can be big. What you heard this today, and we'll hear this afternoon, is just a, a tiny step forward compared to what's going to come out of that webinar. In order to be the most successful and free and prosperous for everybody, nation in the world, is going to take everybody understanding their part in it. The duties of society are more important than the duties of the government, by far. Because the duties of society keep the government from growing out of control, usurping powers. So it's a give and take situation. No government can have greater powers than the people have willingly turned over to it. So what is your job as people not in the government? Just the society of Texians to keep the government restrained, and you have the power to do it. But it requires knowledge, and that's what this webinar is all about. Now it'll be interesting because it's going to be back and forth banter from a script. But then you'll also be able to type in your questions or even your suggestions of where we might go next or something you think is wrong with what we said. It's a two-way deal, but your, your way is by typing in, and we'll get that on our computer screen. So this is a big deal. It's taking a lot of work, and for 100 computers connected, we've got to pay them $99 a month. So we get four sessions a month, or more if you want, okay? This is big. Like I said, look on the website in the coming week. The website, of course, is Texas Republic dot info i m s o texas republic dot info and we will have this uh, web address for the webinar on there within the week all right any questions on there because this is big yes it's not a meeting it is a internet teleconference on it, on, it's going to be on the internet on Thursday. And the way to connect is through a computer. Now, if we can have 100 computers and an average of five people looking at that computer, we can have five of them, you know, people. I'll turn this back over to you. Just want to make an announcement that uh, this second Saturday is normally when the, our congressional sessions are. Well, since this rally took place on this second Saturday, we are having a congressional meeting tomorrow, also in Fredericksburg, but we will be out at the Central Texas Electric Building 
from 9 in the morning until 5 generally in the afternoon holding a regular congressional session. Uh, any of you that uh, want to see what goes on within a congressional meeting, you're welcome to be there. Uh, they, you watch the process and at the, each house, the House of Reps has their meeting, the Senate has their meeting, and then they come together for a joint session. And at the end of that, then if anyone has questions, they have a question and answer period after that. So you're all welcome to be there. Uh, those of you who are not from this area, Central Texas Electric Co-op Building is on 87 South. Do you hit Friendship Lane and turn right? And it sits, it's a big building that sits right in there. So nine till five, Central Texas Electric. Bill Pippen, we are going to go ahead and break for lunch. So if you want to have your musician come up and set up, after we're going to be uh, back here at one o'clock. Bill Pippen will be speaking, and then Jack Ludd, the, the two talk show hosts that we uh, brought in to speak to you. So. There's a concession stand back there for those of you who are new to Fredericksburg. There's restaurants right down the street. Uh, this concession stand has hamburgers, hot dogs, Coke, water. But if you prefer, you've got time to go down the street there. And we're going to have a little bit of musical entertainment at lunchtime if you want to sit right here and listen. That's fine. And then, as I said, at 1 o'clock, Phil Pippen will be speaking and then that's what.